A storm system that battered Northern California is hitting San Diego. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carla Chiquetto. And I'm Carrie Lane. A warning to use caution if you're out driving. The storm is responsible for at least two deaths. It weakened by the time it did reach our county, but is still causing a mess on our freeways. Tonight, News 8 Steve Price has the latest on the conditions here. I know it was a little crazy out there earlier. Yeah, and Chief Meteorologist Carleen Chavis has a first look at your microclimate forecast. We're going to start out in that rain with Steve. Yeah, Carlo and Kerry, the rain really started coming down in our county around 445 and looking at the CHP's reports, that's when the trouble started on our roads. Multiple traffic accidents, reports of spin outs. We also have flooding on some freeways. Definitely a mess out there. But I'll tell you, as bad as we're getting it here across the state, they are getting it much worse. The rain finally made its way into San Diego Monday afternoon just in time to wreak havoc on the afternoon commute and with it strong wind gusts and high surf. Sets up to 10 feet today and lifeguards are predicting waves as high as 15 feet tomorrow. They are also warning of dangerous rip currents, conditions that are definitely for very experienced surfers only. But Mother Nature's powerful punch isn't hitting us nearly as hard as the northern part of our state. In the Bay Area, winds so strong they almost pushed over a truck crossing a bridge and on the Golden Gate Bridge. Gale force winds caused vibrations, creating this eerie sound that was heard miles away. Forecasters call it a bomb cyclone, which means the barometric pressure drops suddenly, causing a storm that rapidly intensifies. And this storm is hitting California hard, uprooting trees, turning creeks into mud-filled rivers, and causing landslides that shut down major highways. These conditions are rough, especially uh, for driving. First snow of the first big snow of the season. That's right, snow, heavy snow, shutting down Interstate 80 over Donner Pass and making a bad situation worse. Areas burned bare by recent fires. They can't handle this much rain, leading to fears of dangerous mudslides. In Santa Barbara, residents in some burn areas were told to leave, and for those who stayed, now it's too late. That's why they're telling folks now to shelter in place if they haven't got out yet, because it's gonna be too dangerous to try and get through any of the roadways if, if they wind up mudding over. So to give you an idea of just how much rain they're getting up in Northern California, in Sacramento, they got over five inches of rain in 24 hours. They haven't had that much rain in that time period in over a hundred years. That's the kind of storm we're having. All right, the big question, how much rain are we going to get in? Man, what about this wind as well? Carlene, I'm going to send it back to you. It, the rain isn't really bothering me. It's yeah. the wind that's just pelting me. Oh, poor Steve. Man, I, I keep looking at you out there. I'm like, buddy, you got to come oh. in. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, Steve is mentioning it. It's the wind. It's the rain. It's a lot that's going on. And we do have some slick roads out there and also the high winds to talk about for tonight. So we are taking a look at the radar. and You can see that swath of moisture extending all the way from Palomar Mountain out to the Pacific. We are seeing heavier rainfall for downtown, also seeing some lighter shower activity near Escondido. But that's going to be the case as we go through the next few hours, still holding on to those rain chances. Now we will have that swath continue to move to towards uh, basically the southern portions of our county and it's going to exit out from the northwest towards the southeast by 7 p.m. You're still dealing with a lot of shower activity, heavier pockets of rainfall near Santee, the same for Ramona and right along the border that will continue with our chances all the way into about 830. But you're starting to see a drying trend across North County, most of the activity East County and also southern portions of our county. But then everything clears out as we go into later on tonight. We'll go ahead and take a look at the wind and the rain and the big surf coming up. Back to you, too. Thanks, Carlene. A San Diego man pleaded not guilty this afternoon to murdering his wife and a male companion last week in an East Village high rise. As news aides David Gottfriedson reports, the prosecutor revealed graphic details of the crime in court, telling the judge the defendant confessed to killing his wife and her friend in a jealous rage. He has a not guilty plea in the knots of all allegations.
a not guilty plea from Alia Bulaban in court Monday. Even though police say the 29-year-old has already confessed to killing his wife, Anna Marie, and her male friend, Rayburn Barron. The defendant was married to the victim, Anna Marie Abulaban, and they have a five-year-old daughter. The defendant broke down in tears as the prosecutor spoke about his daughter. The wife had already kicked her husband out of their high-rise apartment in the East Village just days before gunshots rang out on the 35th floor. A doorbell camera captured the gunshots and the voice of the husband speaking to his mother on a cell phone telling her he shot his wife, Anna. Part of the reason that Ms. Abulaban left the defendant was due to prior domestic violence. The defendant is an influencer on social media with hundreds of videos and photos on YouTube and Instagram where he is seen waving a gun while acting out roles from the movie Scarface. Prosecutors say Abulaban had installed an app on his five-year-old daughter's iPad allowing him to listen in to his wife's apartment. The defendant was monitoring this application and when he heard his wife with another man inside the apartment, he got a loaded gun, he ran from the elevator to the apartment, he immediately fired six rounds from his firearm. First, he shot Rayburn Barron three times. Bullets entered his neck, his cheek, and the back of his head at close range. And then he fired at his wife, leaving one gunshot wound in her forehead. Again, from close range. After the murders, prosecutors say the defendant picked up his daughter from school. He was pulled over on the freeway and arrested without incident. The defendant confessed to the detectives on the case that he shot his wife and her friend because he was accusing her of cheating on him. Abu Laban is being held without bail. The couple's five-year-old daughter was not injured. She is safe, staying with a relative. David, that was really hard to listen to. Description, very hard to hear. Uh, since this is a double murder case, does the defendant face the death penalty in this situation? He could. Prosecutors have filed a special circumstance allegation of multiple murders, making him eligible for the death penalty. But the district attorney typically does not announce whether she will seek the death penalty until after the preliminary hearing, which currently is set for January. David Goffertson reporting live. Thanks, David. The pain at the gas pump is about to get much worse. Price tends to slowly drop this time of the year, but unfortunately that's not happening this fall. Gas prices are soaring countywide. Some are already paying more than $5 a gallon. News 8's Allison Royal has more of the trend and what you can do to save some money. All right, it's no secret. Gas prices here in San Diego County are pretty high. So let me put it in perspective for you. According to AAA, this time last year, the average gallon of gas was $3.17, right? Now it's up to $4.50. That means that if you put 10 gallons of gas in your car every time you fill up, you're paying about $13.30 more every time you come to the gas station in comparison to this time last year. I'm really upset about it. I think they're outrageous. I usually only let it get down to half a tank, so I only have to fill it half a tank. But even then, it's at least $10 more than I paid for a half a tank last year. Jeffrey Spring of AAA says oil prices are high. So that one is now right around $85 a barrel, which is more than twice as high as it was last year. Even though gas prices are surging nationwide, California takes the cake, with gas even more expensive than Hawaii's. I think they're outrageous. I think it's the policy of the administration and the California taxing people. California has the highest taxes on, on the fuel in the country. Spring said the convenience of getting things delivered during the pandemic has only added to the problem. We have an expensive product to produce. Add on that more taxes than many parts of the country. Add on that price of oil right now, and that's why we are where we are. Gas prices obviously change all the time. According to Gas Buddy, as of Monday, the cheapest place countywide to buy gas is Valley Center. Spring also said that gas can sometimes cost more in affluent beach communities, but again, it changes. However, Spring says your actual driving habits can help your wallet. And when you're driving, look ahead, farther ahead in traffic to see what kind of traffic, what traffic's going on. If it's slowing down ahead of you, start coasting rather than hitting your brakes. When you look at gas on a state by state level, according to AAA, the cheapest gas right now is actually in Oklahoma. If you want to weigh in, you can head to our CBS 8 Instagram page.